what is it? Another case for Nick Carter, master detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's curious adventure. Grands of murder. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the Grecian daggers. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we commence today's story, we find Nick and Patsy strolling through one of the streets in the West 40s in the heart of the theater district. It's mid-afternoon. Oh, gosh, Nick, things certainly look different here in the theater district in the daytime, don't they? True enough, Patsy. But if we only knew what's going on behind the walls of some of these theaters along here, we might find mystery and excitement right now, even in broad daylight. <laughs> For instance, look over there in front of the Risdale Theater. What? Oh, yes, that's Riley's official car, isn't it? Certainly is. There's one of his men on guard at the front door of the theater. Oh, come on, Nick. Let's see what's doing. Yeah, that's the theater where Risdale's rehearsing his new super-colossal spectacle play, The Sacrifice, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's right, Nick. Leo Frame playing the lead. There are three leading women. Mara Dabre, Lita Lindman, and Bella Claire. Gosh, I'll bet there's going to be a super-duper when it opens. Easy, Patsy. See if I know this man on guard here. Hmm, no, I don't. You can get inside, Nick. Just tell him who you are. And maybe Riley doesn't want us inside. Oh. Then we better play it safe. I have an idea. You wait here a second. Okay. Good luck to you. This will be easy. We'll be saying hello to Riley in just a minute. Say, fella, is that your car out there? Yeah. So what? You mind if the kids let air out of the tires? What? Say, if those kids are playing around with them, <laughs> Come on, Patsy. Let's scroll in and see what Riley's doing here. <laughs> right with you, Nick. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Nick, isn't this the swankest theater you ever saw? Yeah. And the decorations cost Risdale plenty. Oh, they must have. He built the theater, you know, to house his super terrific production. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what's inside. Gosh, I'll say there's excitement in here. Come on, let's find Riley and see what goes on. It's a wonderful scene you're directing here, Riley. Is this part of a new show? Curtis, well, what the devil are you doing here? Patsy, quiet those women down, will oh, you? Oh, sure, I'll take care of you. Will you tell me, Nick, how you got in here? I gave orders. To I got in by the simple laws of cause and effect, Riley. Cause and effect? I don't get it. Very simple. I caused your man at the door to leave his post, and then I effected an entrance. Somebody ought to teach you not to stick your nose in what it ain't wanted. But now that it is stuck in... Well, all right. But, but, but mind you now, this is my case, and I don't want no interference, no meddling. I don't want that face, Nick. Ah, I think it's been a murder. Who, what, and where? Yes, the deceased is Leo Frayne, America's sweetheart and fortune's gift to women. And the party who bumped him off... Leo Lindman did it. Mr. Lindman lied to her about Leo running around with her ears. Come on, now, come on. You can't kill him. Well, Rizal... Did Frayne act so badly you had to kill him to teach him a lesson? Oh, this is awful, Mr. Carter. I'm ruined. This will finish me as a producer. Everything I have in the world is sunk in this play. I lose my theater, too. I'd... Oh, it's the end of everything for me. Oh, come on. Put yourself together, man. If rumor can be believed, you won't lose as much as all that. Haven't I heard that you had your stars insured against that thing? Oh, sure, the big stars, yes. Frayne's appearance in the show is insured for $50,000. So is Myra Dabray's. I've already put a lot more than 50000 into this thing. Tough, but you'll get over it. I think what I'll lose in the play alone, I would have grossed a million with Frayne in the lead. The part was written for him. You can't go on without him. I hope it's not as bad as all that. Now tell me what happened. Okay. Leo Frayne was stabbed half an hour ago. There were only seven people in the theater. Three women, Della Claire, Myra Debray, Little Lindman. Four men, Frayne, my stage manager, the doorman, and myself. He was on the way to my office when he was killed. Just at the foot of the stairs leading to my office. It's backstage there. Any idea who would have been interested in seeing him killed? I think Frayne has fought with everyone here at some time or another this afternoon. Lindman fought with him. Myra fought with him. Bella and he had a big argument. He even had an argument with the stage manager. How about you? You fight with him, too? I would have liked nothing better, but I didn't. Actors are hard enough to handle anyway without fighting with them. Well, how about showing me the victim, Rizale? Very well. Come on, this way. Hey, Titan, keep order here while we're gone. Don't let anybody leave the stage till we get back. Yes, now, show Nick the body, Rizal. Well, Riley, 
I never expected to find you in a murder case without all those so-called experts you have down at headquarters. Yeah, with three bump-offs in the Bronx and two in Brooklyn, everybody's busy. Anyway, I don't need them. Here we are. This little alcove at the foot of the stairs. I'll, I'll hold this curtain back so you can see in. Hmm. Leo Brain has certainly taken his last bow. Very pretty speech, Mr. Carter, but not very helpful. Thought I wasn't supposed to be helpful. Well, you don't have to stand around doing nothing now that you're here. Well, here's the way it looks to me. I was in my office. And had sent word to Fran to meet me there. He was just about to go up the stairs when he met somebody and started to talk with him. Probably one of the women, I should say. Why'd you say that? Because I doubt if Fran would have stopped to talk to a man. But he always had time for a woman. Mm. Also, a woman could have been holding a dagger in her hand, and he'd never noticed it. Because it was part of all the women's costumes in this act. While he was talking to her, she stabbed him. And he fell back into that chair where, where he is now. And she pulled the curtain across the alcove and went back to her dressing room. You say the dagger that was used on Franny is part of the costume? Yes. All the women wore them in their hair for the big sacrifice scene. Oh, so there were a lot of them all alike, eh? All identically the same. How many did there be all together? That's uh, three, six, eight, nine. Nine and all. Rizdale, you said you thought a woman killed Fran. This would certainly prove your statement. What? Look. Now, what are them mixed? Two long black hairs caught in the handle of this dagger in Frayne's chest. Then it was a woman did it. Well, a woman is back here. That left Lita Lindman out. She's a blonde. Yeah, yeah, sure. She's out. Hey, give me them hairs, Nick. They're evidence. Thanks. Yes, sir. We have found which of the women has black hair and a jealous disposition, and we got the killer. Now, let's check up on those daggers first. Where's the Where are the dressing room? Down here, Lieutenant. Wasn't Della Claire's dagger in her hair when I saw her on the stage a few minutes ago? Yes, yeah, she's still in costume. The other daggers ought to be here. This is Lindman's dressing room. Yeah, there's her dagger on the dressing table there, which leaves Myra Debray's dagger not accounted for. Well, Debray's dressing room's over here. Mm -hmm. And there on the table, Lieutenant, is another pretty silver dagger. Oh, well, what do you know? Oh. Just this, Riley. If one of those three women did it, she didn't use her own dagger. Yeah, but where did the extra dagger come from? It could have been one of the chorus daggers. Or the killer could have used her own dagger and then borrowed one from the chorus to replace hers. Sure, Nick, that's it. And let's see if one of the chorus daggers is missing. Over here, Lieutenant. They're all there on the dressing table. Let's see. Five, seven, eight. No, seven. You said there should be nine, Rizdale. That leaves two missing. Yes. Yeah. We'll get the stage manager. He'll know. Can you call him from here? No, but the other end of this corridor leads right out into the orchestra pit. I'll get him at once. Hey, wait a minute, Rizzo. Yes? You say you can get from here directly to the orchestra pit? Oh, yes. Why? When you were telling me the story earlier, you said that you sent your stage manager, McIntosh, out front to get your script just before Frayne was killed, didn't you? Well, yes, but... And McIntosh knew that you were expecting Frayne to come up to your office. I believe I mentioned it yet. Oh, McIntosh is where he could get to this part of the theater where Frame was killed and back outside again quickly without being seen. Yes, 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 but so what? He had a quarrel with Frame. He knew Frame would be here in the corridor just about then. And he knew all about them. None of that too. proves anything, Riley. Let's get on with our investigation. Well, oh, I wish we had a technician with a microscope here. That would tell who belongs to them here fast enough. Quite true, Riley. But if the dagger that killed Frayne was taken from the chorus dressing room, those hairs could have come from any dark-haired girl in the chorus. Look, uh, we aren't doing anything just standing here. Let's do something. Suppose the doorman could tell us anything? Well, we can ask him, but he's a little deaf. He, he already told us he didn't hear anything unusual. Well, I'll ask him anyway. Call him in, won't you? Of course. Henry? Henry? Yes, sir. Come in here, will you? Yes, sir. You want me, Mr. Ridgedale? Yes, Henry. Lieutenant Riley wants to ask you a few questions. Now, Henry, after everybody else had left, did you pay any attention to what went on down here? Eh? Uh, after everybody else had left, did you notice what went on down here? Oh, no, sir. That ain't my job. You didn't hear anything? People passing or talking or a cry? No, sir. Once or twice I heard a door shut, I think, and just before we found Mr. Frayne, I heard him leave his dressing room and... Slam his door. Uh-huh. Anything else? I thought I heard a door shut very quiet-like right after that, but I can't be sure. I, I don't hear as well as I used to. You say you heard a door close quietly. Any idea which one it was? No, sir. Ain't even sure I heard it. Looks as if somebody snuck out into the corridor as the frame started for the stairs and killed him. Maybe they planned it, but maybe they just saw they was alone and done it. Oh, I don't like this. We're getting nowhere fast. Uh, does it feel hot in here? My I just... Redville, what's the matter here? Why'd you get that handkerchief you're using? This handkerchief? Yes. Whose is it? 
Oh, why, it's mine. Why? Because there's blood on it. Fresh blood stain. Is it possible that Rizdale himself is the killer of Leo Frayne? Or is this some new and unexpected twist of the case? We'll see in just a moment. And now back to our story. We left Rizdale trying to explain to Nick and Lieutenant Riley how there happened to be fresh bloodstains on his handkerchief. Can you explain those bloodstains, Rizdale? Blood am I? But I can't... Wait. Yes, of course. Now, now I remember. This, this isn't my handkerchief. As I came down the steps looking for frame tonight, I found this at the foot of the stairs. I picked it up without thinking, and, it, and well, just a moment later when I found Frame's body, I must have stuck it in my pocket without thinking what I was doing. May I see it? Oh, of course, here. Hmm. A little small for a man's handkerchief. And here are some initials. Pretty fancy, but I should say they were D.A. Huh? D.A. D.A.? Sabray. Uh, is Miss Sabray got black hair with him? Yes, she has. That settles it. She wraps this around the handle of the dagger to keep the blood off her hands and to keep her fingerprints off the handle. Well, this handkerchief and them black hairs we found in the dagger will send her right to the chair. If the hairs are hers, Riley. And don't well, forget how easy it'll be for anyone to pick up a lost handkerchief and use it for a false clue. Now, look here, Nick Carter. Will you stop trying to tell me how to run my own business? I'm just trying to point out to you, Riley, that if those hairs didn't come from Mr. Bray's head, you're right back where you started, handkerchief and all. Sure, all right, all right. <laughs> then what do we do now? Well, it's... It isn't any of my business, but I have an idea that might work. Well, let's have it by all means. Suppose whoever left this handkerchief near the body didn't do it intentionally. Hmm? Suppose they just dropped it without noticing it. Now, nobody but us knows it's been found, but whoever lost it is bound to think about it when the excitement dies down a little. Hmm. Then she'll get scared and maybe look for it. Suppose we give her the chance to find it. How do you mean, give her a chance? Well, like this. We put the handkerchief right back where I found it, only hidden a little more. Then we'll send the three women back to their dressing room. Then we give them a chance to sneak out. Mm. It'll be an interesting experiment, Riley, even if it doesn't prove anything. Well, okay, we'll see. We'll try it. But where can we hide somebody to watch? There's a vacant men's dressing room just down the hall here. Suppose I put Henry here on guard in there. There's a phone there. He can phone us as soon as he sees anybody come out. We'll be in my office. Okay. You, you got that, Henry? Yeah, sure. Sure, I can do it. Now, Henry... You can sit right here. We'll leave the door open a crack, and as soon as you see one of them leaving your dressing room, call me at once. Yeah, I got it, Mr. Risdale. I'll watch real good. Now, let's get those women down here. Poor detective, think if you make so much noise. <sighs> now, Patsy, what's the trouble? Well, Nick, everything was peaceable enough when suddenly Bella jumped up and came over here and started yelling at Miss Lindman. And she started yelling back, and a minute there was a swell fight going on. Didn't I say I wanted no noise here? Well, I meant it. I don't want a sound out of any of you. Now go back to your dressing rooms and stay there and be quiet. And don't start out of them until I say you can. Mr. Bray. Yes, Mr. Carter? Were things around here this afternoon really as bad as Risdale says they were? Yes, Mr. Carter, every bit. Even I lost my temper once. Crane was especially unpopular all afternoon today. Why, he even quarreled with Macintosh, who generally never takes the trouble to quarrel with anyone. That Macintosh over there? Uh, oh, yes. He's an ugly little man, but I guess he's all right. How did Crane take all the argument that was going on? Well, it was making me jumpy. He was talking of quitting the show, and Rizzo had to lay down the law to all the rest of us to soothe him. But I I'd better go on back to my dressing room before the lieutenant gets mad. Well, before you go, Mr. Bray, may I borrow your handkerchief just a moment? Well, I don't seem to have it. I, I must have left it in my dressing room. I'm sorry. Hey, come on, let's get up to Rizzo's office and see what happens. If anything. We don't expect this will produce much in the way of results. Well, come on, anyway. Even you could be wrong, you know. <laughs> This waiting's a tough game, isn't it? Mm, I'd rather be doing something. If we had a microscope, we could save time. Huh? Let me have those hairs we found, will you, Riley? What do you want them for now? Just to match them up with these hairs. Uh, what did you suppose? A specimen of Claire's hair and Red Ray's. 
I have a pocket magnifying glass here. Thought I'd see if they could be matched up. Roughly? Oh, sure, here you are. Hmm. Yes. Debray's hair is finer than Claire's. And it has a faint ripple that Claire's doesn't have. Yes, rather, well, there's almost no question but what the hairs found on the dagger match Debray's hairs. Near as I can tell. Oh, oh, look, I'm going crazy sitting here. I can't think. My nerves are like a jackrabbit. I... Oh, it's either one of you got an aspirin. Aspirin? Not me. Sorry, Rizale. I don't carry them either. Oh, my head is splitting. I, I think my secretary keeps some of her desk in the next office. If she doesn't, I'll fire her. Oh, by the way, the ring for this office is two short ones. All the office phones are on the same line. Now, if you hear two short rings, it'll probably be Henry. So you better answer fast. I'll be right back. Rizdale seems to have the heebie-jeebies. Mm, so would you, Nick. If you was losing a hundred grand, even if it wasn't all your own money. Well, look, what about them hairs? I feel sure the hairs of the braids are all right. But I'm not yet positive just what they prove. Mm, They're mm. probably... Po oh, oh, that's Henry. Yeah, Lieutenant Riley speaking. They just came out. I can't be sure who it is, but it is a woman. She's just picking up the handkerchief now. Huh? Now she's starting back to her... Henry! Henry, what is it? What's happened? What is it, Riley? Something's happened to Henry. Happened to Henry? Yeah, let's go. Well, this door wasn't locked when I left it. It was open so Henry could see who was going down the corridor with a handkerchief. Key was on the inside. I, I don't get it. Well, haven't you got a key that'll open it? Yes, I have a master key. Here. Henry. Nick. Look. Oh. Another one of them daggers. Yes. Right in the middle of his back. He's dead, all right. Yes, he must have seen him looking out or heard him talking to me. She pushed the door open and stabbed him before he could turn around. It's gone. The handkerchief is gone from where we left it. That settles it. No more stalling. We'll break the door down if we have to. Hold everything, Riley. Take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? You want a live prisoner or a dead one? What do you mean by that? Look here. If Mr. Bray is guilty and you break her door down, she'll know you have the goods on her. Well... She still has one of those daggers. And if I know her, she'll use it on herself if she's guilty. Well, so what? Further, furthermore, Henry said he couldn't be sure who it was he saw, didn't he? No, Nick, it couldn't be anybody but Debray. Even if you're right, Riley... If you let her think she's gotten away with it, you can search her dressing room when she's out of it. Then you can find the handkerchief and the key she locked this room with. They'll be hidden somewhere in there. All the rooms are private washrooms. So she might try to put the key and the handkerchief down one of the drains. It'll take a plumber to get at them if she does. Mm, then by golly, we'll get a plumber and tear out every pipe in the place. All right, Risky, he'll get him out. It's your idea. Get the women out of the dressing room so we can search them. All right. Carter and I'll go up to my office. I'll call them from there and then ask them to come up. Okay, okay. Get going. <laughs> to wait here, Mr. Carter. It won't be long now. We just wanted to get all three of you out of the way while Lieutenant Riley digs up the evidence that will send somebody to the electric chair. The chair? Did you know that human hair can be identified just the same as fingerprints can? And just as exactly? Well, I didn't. No, I. I can recall reading that recently. Why? Whose hair have you found, Mr. Carter? I'd rather not divulge that. Got them, Nick. The key and the handkerchief. They were both in the drain pipe caught in the first trap. Which room did you find them in? Mr. Brave. How do you explain this handkerchief and key which we found in your dressing room? Let, let me see that handkerchief. Yeah. Well, I can't explain it, Lieutenant. It's not my handkerchief. But not yours. No, it, it's mine, Lieutenant. I thought so. Yours, Miss Clear. Yes. Well, it's a very elaborate monogram. Hardly anybody could read it, but it is D.C. It does look something like my monogram. D apostrophe A. Except that my monogram is very plain and simple. Here. Yeah. Well, I'll be a... I'll bet you killed him anyway. You... Hold oh, on, Riley. Where did you find that key and handkerchief? In Myra de Bray's dressing room. Right. And since Mr. Bray wouldn't have put it in there in her own dressing room, and Della Clare couldn't have, and since McIntosh wasn't on the scene at all when Henry was murdered, the only other possible person who could have killed both Frayne and Henry is... Ah, you mean Nita Lindman. No, Riley. I mean Mark Risdale. <laughs> Nick, I don't see how you figured that all out as fast as you did. There were too many clues, Patsy. The black hairs on the dagger was a clue. The handkerchief with the Bray's initials on it was a clue. But both together were just a little too pat. Oh. Nobody leaves several incriminating clues around. 
bothered me until I found that it wasn't that Ray's handkerchief. Then everything fell right into place. What do you mean, everything? Well, Rizdale had a flop on his hands, and he knew it. Uh-huh. He was broke. He was going to lose his theater. But the appearance of Frayne and Debray was insured for $50,000 each. That is, Rizdale got $50,000 if either Frayne or Debray did not appear in the show for any reason except voluntary withdrawal. So, if he could kill Frayne and hang the killing on Myra Debray, he could collect $100,000 cash. And that would put him on his feet again. Oh, I see. So he sent everybody home, except the seven who had to be there. Then he went to his office sent for Frayne, and then laid in wait for him at the foot of the stairs, having arranged that no one else should be around at the time. And after killing him, he went back to his office and waited until the body was found. And he planted the handkerchief there, thinking it was Mario Debray. That's it. It was easy enough for him to plant the hairs on the dagger. But how did he kill Henry? You were all there together, weren't you? And he was clever enough to make it look so. He planted Henry in the vacant dressing room, and we all started upstairs. He'd probably have invented some excuse to stay behind. But Lindman started screaming just then, and we all rushed up on stage. That's right. Well, that gave Risdale a couple of minutes to slip back into the corridor, stab old Henry, lock the door, plant the key and handkerchief in the drain in Debray's room, and then join us in the office. But, Nick, you heard old Henry speaking when Riley answered the phone, didn't you? No, Patsy, I didn't. I heard Risdale impersonating Henry. Oh, I did. You recall he slipped into the next office to get some aspirin? Well, he used the house phone in there, called his own office, impersonated Henry. Remember, he used to be an actor years ago. And then faked the blow in the fall. It was almost a beautiful alibi. And if he hadn't mistaken Bella's handkerchief for Myra's, he might have gotten away with it. Yes, Patsy. And that was a fatal error. Either the handkerchief or the hairs of the dagger would have been excellent proof. But he was so anxious to be sure that Bray was the goat that he planted too much. He wove too many strands to his web. And one of them tripped him up. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazines. Ron Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Chalt as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White, and the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. This is Mutual. Thank you.